curious how many of you have heard the expression, the worst disease I have never heard of? One, two, and yet this is the rallying cry of the families and children with skin disorder that I treat called epidermolysis bullosa. Try saying this three times fast. No. There are several types of epidermolysis bullosa, but I will call it EB. So children that are born with epidermolysis bullosa, or EB, miss a thin layer of protein between the layers of the skin. Such a small defect and such devastating results. They have their skin, we all have our skin, attached by a mechanism almost like a Velcro. We all know these loops and hooks that hold things together. And uh, having EB is like having no hooks. So anytime the skin rubs against anything, when you pick up the baby with EB, when the seams of clothing wrap over her skin, a seat belt, the layers come apart. It's much like when you have an ill-fitting shoe and a little blister on your heel, only it's everywhere. It's outside of the body, it's inside of the body. And if you think that the blister is not as terrible, believe me, if it is on your baby, it is. This is beautiful baby, Elisa that has recessive dystrophic EB. Until a few years ago, all that the mind in medicine could have done was to put bandage on these injuries, to put padding, ointments, gauze, keep them wrapped up. And when they got injuries, you treated the infections. That's it. So these patients are not mine, but this is what my patients look like when they come to see me. In these children with EB, or people, because there are some adults as well, the life and the world is constantly threatening to them. They get an infection and they die. They get an injury and the, the scar fuses their fingers. They cannot use their hands. They cannot walk, they cannot eat, and if they live long enough, they develop an aggressive kind of skin cancer and die of that. These images are from Debra International, and they, this is how people with EB feel. As many disorders, and diseases in medicine. This one cannot be treated by drugs. And drugs were miracles, or are miracles in our own time. Penicillin, insulin, aspirin. They cannot be treated by biologics, the proteins, the little antibodies that can help with inflammation of joints or can increase white blood cell count after I give somebody with leukemia chemotherapy or radiation. They cannot cure this disease. Now I am bone marrow transplant physician. I treat children and adults with leukemia and bone marrow failures with bone marrow transplant. Bone marrow transplant basically is that you take away the bad, the malfunctioning, the cancers or malfunctioning deficient bone marrow, and you replace it. You resupply the body with a healthy new blood, new bone marrow from somebody else, and that recreates the whole blood and an immune system of that individual for the lifetime. 
So I use cells as medications. I use cells as drugs, if you will. I regenerate the blood system in people. So now, what has bone marrow transplant to do with skin? Well, nothing, we thought, until mother's plea sparked us into action to try bone marrow transplant in EB. So we started with mice with EB. We started with mice before we moved to people. And we saw that the blisters that the mice have that are similar to the blister that people have go away. So the protein that is so important for, for the Velcro function is shown in red. That's a normal skin of a normal mouse. If you take the bandaged mouse with EB, there's no red. That's why it has EB. And after transplant, if you look very carefully, there's a little red, just enough to hold the skin together and to heal the blisters. So, this is an incredible moment. This is a eureka moment. This is when I sit with all humility and gratitude because I'm seeing under the microscope something that has not been seen by anybody before. For the first time, we were able to show that you can correct a disease that's outside of the cells by cells. And at the University of Minnesota Children's Hospital, we have taken that proof of concept from the lab into the clinical trial to make it available for kids such as Elisa, which brings me to her and my longest distance house call I have ever made to Italy, Palermo, approximately 5,104 miles away. When I met Elisa, we have already transplanted a number of children. We knew that in some, it worked remarkably well. We have been still refining the process, though. But time is an enemy for children like Elisa. Every day, she's blistering. Every day, she's choking on sloughed of tissues from her mouth. Every day, she's in excruciating pain. And her parents would do anything, just about, to help her, including moving from the sunny Palermo to Minnesota. <laughs> we cheated a little bit. It's photoshopped. <laughs> Where she got a transplant from her healthy sister, and on the top, you see the blisters before the transplant and then after the transplant. The blistering is much, much different. But bone marrow transplant is a serious thing. There are many complications. Here, she's taking corticosteroids to manage one of the complications. It's not a cure. Some children die. It's not enough, even if you get to meet Eddie Vedder. So we went to the drawing board, and we said, OK, it's DNA defect. It's gene defect. Can we fix it? Can we fix it in the cells, like these skin cells, that can help her? But skin cells, they know one thing, and one thing very well. They make more of themselves. Bone marrow is different. Bone marrow has stem cells that can give rise to red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. And then before we are born, we have embryonic stem cells, which can give rise to all cells of your body. But after we are born, they are all gone. And several years ago, Dr. Yamanaka has done an amazing thing. He has taken skin cells like these. He altered them a little bit and made them into the cells that are just like the embryonic stem cells. He called them induced pluripotent stem cells. So in the step one, we made induced pluripotent stem cells from skin 
of children with epidermolysis bullosa, with EB. Now, it's no good, though, if you make a lot of them, even the right phenotypes, because they all have this genetic error. They are all EB cells. They cannot produce this red protein. So we went back to DNA. Remember DNA, four molecules, match up over and over and over again in multitude of combinations until they make a code of life to instruct the cells how to live, what to be. And uh, what happens in EB is that there is a typo in the code, the typo that is life destructive. So what if we can take out the typo? And it turns out that we can. And these are the three ways we can do this. These are acronyms. You know, scientists like to make, you know, fun things too. <laughs> and they are molecular size scissors. They go to the side of the typo. They are guided there. They cut out the typo. And we put a lot of good DNA there at the same time, and they use that correct DNA to repair itself. And then typo, the typo's gone. Step two. And then you move to the whole tissue, the whole skin. So these are the cells from the induced pluripotent stem cells that have been gene edited in a patient with EB. On the big picture, you see that there's no red, so this is before the correction. In the little inset, the red is the all-important protein that's in the right place between the layers of the skin. So what we have done, we have taken the skin cells, we have given them the ability to be stem cells, we have corrected the genetic typo, and then we can make inexhaustible supply of cells that can be used to treat chronic wounds, used for the bone marrow transplant, and, you know, is it possible, a cure of this disorder? That's what we are working on. That's what we are doing every day. To make it safer, to make it more efficient, so that we can come back to people, to children like Elisa. Elisa who, thanks to the bone marrow transplant, now can run, can walk, goes to the pool, rides her bike, can eat, and it's as fun and as mischievous as this picture would make you feel. She can live her life with fewer blisters, with fewer infections, with less pain, and hopefully free of cancer. She can live and meet the Pope. <laughs> but that's another story.